In this video, I'm showing you how to track your project's progress in Microsoft Project. We're dividing this video into three parts. First, creating a schedule baseline. Second, establishing our status date. And third, updating our project's progress. By the way, if we're just meeting for the very first time, my name's Alvin, and it's nice to meet you. I'm an engineering project manager, and on this channel, I help you start and grow your career in project management, and I'll even show you some of the easiest ways to use Microsoft Project and other software tools. As we get into this, join me in the comments down below. What is one of the biggest challenges that you have with using Microsoft Project? Drop me a comment below because I'm here to serve you. Please let me know and I'll do my very best to respond to your comments. So on my screen right here, I've created a sample project plan to build a do-it-yourself doghouse. If we hover our mouse to the top left box, we'll see that I am using the entry table with a Gantt chart view. If you wanna match what I'm seeing right here, then do the following. Right click this top left most cell and choose entry. Then move your mouse to the left side of the panel, right click it, and then choose Gantt chart. My project plan is divided into six phases for initiation, design, material preparation, construction of house, testing of the house, and final finishing. I've also inputted estimates for the duration of every single task. For example, under the group of initiation, I've assigned estimates of three days each for project planning, selecting the location, and defining the layout. Now keep in mind, these are just estimates because, hey, we can never know with 100% certainty how long something will take. We can have a very high confidence level that something should finish in five days, for example, but issues can arise, they can pop up here and there, which can delay your schedule or even opportunities can arise, which can pull us ahead of schedule. So with our project plan created, step one is to create your project's baseline. This takes a snapshot of your project's current schedule so you can use it as a comparison as your project progresses over time. To do this, move your left mouse button to the project tab that's showing at the top portion of your screen. Left click it, and click on the Set Baseline button in the Schedule panel. Then click on Set Baseline. You'll see this pop-up window appear. Now for the first dropdown, let's choose the default baseline. And underneath it, we'll set the baseline for our entire project. After you click OK, you'll have created your baseline for your entire project. So to make sure that your baseline was created, move your mouse button to the Gantt Chart Format tab. Then select the button for baseline, and in that dropdown, you can see the most latest baseline that you just created. Now mine says, baseline last saved on this date. So when I click on this baseline in the Gantt chart to the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a dark grayish bar appear underneath each of the red and blue task bars. These dark grayish bars, they represent the scheduled baseline that you just created. Now step two, is to create your status date, which we'll be using to update your project's progress. As project managers, we don't typically update our project schedule every single day. Most likely, we'll update our project schedule once every week, or worst case, we'll update it every other week. This status date feature in Microsoft Project is the date that you're entering in the latest updates for your project's tasks. Keep in mind that your status date should not be a date in the future because, well, you can't update tasks if the work hasn't been completed yet. Makes sense, right? So your status date is the date that you're updating your schedule to. In other words, the task that you're updating should have already been completed. So you're updating tasks up until the status date. Does that make sense? So to create your status date, select the project tab at the top portion of your screen and move your mouse to the status panel. At the very top here is the field for status date, which currently shows NA, since it hasn't been set yet. 
For our example, let's click on this and let's mark our status date to be Friday, October 11, which coincides with the plan finish date of the third task in our plan, which is define layout. Click on OK, and you'll see that your status date has been populated in the status date field at the very top. To show our status date inside our Gantt chart, move your mouse to the inside of the Gantt chart. Right click and select the option for grid lines. You'll see this pop up window. On the left side of it, where it says line to change, select the option for status date. On the right hand side of it, let's make the color red so it's easy to see. And for the line type, let's make it a solid line. When you click on OK, our red status date line will show up. So when we update our status date to be Friday, October 11, we're only updating the tasks that are leading up until the red status date line. Now, before I reveal the next step with updating the progress of your project's tasks, don't forget to smash that like button if you're getting value out of this video and also to show me your support. So to update your project's progress, let's first change our table view from entry to tracking. To do that, move your mouse to the top left most cell box right click it and then choose tracking. Right now we're using tracking table and the Gantt chart view mode to help us better visualize the changes that we're updating to our project's tasks. Let's add in two columns to our table. The first column to add is for indicators. So we'll know if an issue happens when we're updating our schedule. To do that, right click the column for task name and then select the option for Insert Column. Inside that dropdown, choose the option for Indicators. Now, the second column to add is for Duration, so we can see how long will each task take. Right-click the column for Percent Completion and choose the option for Insert Column. And in that dropdown menu, look for and choose the option that says Duration. As I mentioned earlier, Looking at our Gantt chart, we will update all the tasks that lead up to this red line. So for our first task with project planning, let's say that it took longer than our planned duration of three days. Instead of three days, let's say it took a full five days. So we'll change the duration from three days to five days. And immediately, what do you notice in the Gantt chart to the right? The plan baseline for this task has stayed the same, but the updated duration that's highlighted in red, guess what? It increased in length. In other words, the schedule has been delayed. So right away, we can see a variation in our schedule from what was planned to what we expect to actually complete. Since this task has been delayed, I recommend as best practice to include a note for this task to document the rationale for why a task needs additional time. To do that, double click on the task name for project planning, and you should see this new dialog window appear for task information. Select a tab for notes, and it's here where we can enter in any information that's related to the task and what caused it to be delayed. For our example, let's say that project planning was delayed by two days because additional time was needed to confirm the scope of the project with building our doghouse. Click OK, and what you'll see in the Indicators column is a Notes icon. If you double-click that Notes icon, you'll immediately be taken to the notes that you just captured. Super helpful trick when you need to confirm why several of your tasks have been delayed and to see the impact on your project. So to mark this task as completed, in the Percent Completion column, type in the number for 100. And when you do that, you'll see that its taskbar in the Gantt chart has turned into a blue color, showing that it's been completed. And the two columns for actual start and actual finish have been populated with the actual dates based on our updated duration. So that is just one example with how you can update one of your project's tasks. Now let's say that our second task of select location was completed in one day, instead of our planned duration of three days. So we'll go ahead and we'll update our duration to be one day. And when we do that, 
we'll say in our Gantt chart that our baseline durations for all the tasks, they now match all the tasks that are downstream, which is really great news for us. Let's mark this task as also 100% complete in the percent complete column. All right, and now we're left with our third task of the fine layout. Let's say that it's moving on track per our planned baseline and it should finish as expected. So to easily mark it as on track, move your mouse to the top panel and make sure you're on the tab for task. In the section for schedule, there's a button for mark on track. When you select this option, it sets your highlighted task so it's marked as on schedule per your established status date line, which we created earlier in the video. So let's left click the mark on track button and it should now show as 100% completed. Now I wanna go through with you another scenario where we're now another week into our project. So let's update our status date line to be Friday, October 18. To do that, move your mouse to the top portion of your screen and choose the tab for project. Inside the panel for status, we'll see the field for status date. Left click the status date and change it so that's equal to Friday, October 18. When you do that, you'll see a red status date line move on the Gantt chart to be on October 18. Makes sense so far? Again, like before, we can only update the tasks that are to the left of this red status date line. So for updating these next batch of tasks, I wanna show you a very quick and easy way to update their progress. For our first task of draft design, let's say that it's 100% completed. The very fast and easy way to update its progress is go to the task tab, and then under the schedule section, you'll see different buttons to mark different percentages completed. You have 0%, 25%, 50%, 75% and finally 100% completed. So let's left click the button for 100% completed. When we do that, the fields will update accordingly and the tasks bar in the Gantt chart will turn a blue color to show that it's completed. Now for a second task of expert design review, let's say that we're 50% completed with getting it done. Let's left click the button for 50% completed in the schedule panel and you should also see the blue bar appear for this task in the Gantt chart. Of course, it only appears halfway in the overall bar because it's only 50% done. For the last remaining task that's supposed to be done in parallel, we have the work for identify materials. It's supposed to be done in three days. And let's say that it was actually done on time. So let's select the task and left click the button for mark on track in the schedule section in the top panel. And all the columns will update to show the work is 100% completed. So by now, you've learned how to set your project schedule baseline, how to set your status date, and how to update your project's progress if tasks are either behind schedule or if they're being completed on time. This is just the tip of the iceberg. To learn everything you need to manage a project using Microsoft Project, please watch this video next, and I'll see you in the next video.